got a nice little dado plane uh, and it required a lot of work but in the end uh, cut a very beautiful little dado this is working wooden planes i'm abraham i take antique planes and get them back into working condition nice looking little plane um, body's in great condition it's pretty clean um, made by ohio tool company so sometime between 1850s and the 1910s. Um, I'm guessing it's probably early 20th century uh, based on how the great a condition it is. It's 7 8 uh, inch. Um, all the metal parts are pretty rusty. The depth gauge, excuse me, the depth stop um, adjuster is is kind of seized up. Um, those are the knickers. Um, they cut the wood fiber before the blade starts cutting, um, prevents tear out because you're going to cross grain um, with these things. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, the iron is pretty rusty. The knickers are rusty. The um, the adjuster is is very rusty. So we'll drop all that into an evaporous bath. Let it sit. Uh, let it sit for about a day and a half. Um, looks like somebody at at some point in time tried to clean this up. Um, didn't take the majority of the rust off, uh, but. Uh, looks like they did try and sharpen it. Um, it's got a decent bevel on it. Um, but I like my tools to be rust free. Taking off the rust is going to be the easy part. Um, this is where we're going to do the heavy lifting is flattening the body. So the outside um, the edge, the, the bottom and the inside as well, they all need to be um, totally flat to be able to cut a data with a consistent width and also to keep the plane from um, binding as it cuts the dado. Um, so let's check the bottom. Um, bottom has a little bit of a um, dip right in the middle, but I think that's going to be fine for the work we're doing. Um, the this edge has, you can see the me rocking the straight edge back and forth, has a real high spot right where the iron is. Um, so we're going to have to knock that down. And then the this side has the opposite problem, unsurprisingly, and has a big dip right where the uh, right where the iron is. So we're gonna have to knock down the two high spots in the front and the back to get this flat. So it's a simple enough task. Um, for this inside edge, we're gonna take uh, just a rabbit plane. Um, so it sits up flush against the rest of the body and set it to take a pretty, I was hoping for it to cut a pretty um, fine shavings a little little deeper than I wanted um, but gets the job done and there you go nice and flat so we're gonna flip it over we're gonna use a jack plane uh, on the other side to knock down those two high spots in the front and the back Again, set to take a very thin shaving off.
We've got it almost flat enough. Still have a little bit of a gap. Um, so I'm gonna take a little bit more off. You know, obviously you're taking the patina off when you do it like this, uh, but that's the price you pay to have a user. Looks like there's still maybe a tiny gap right there in the center, uh, but that's definitely, definitely flat enough um, for our purposes. So we really don't have much to do to take care of the body. You can take off this sticker, uh, remains in this sticker. Uh, I don't remember how much I got this for. And I think I got this at an antique fair here in Alameda. Uh, I'm trying to remember where I got this from. Anyhow, the sticky comes off with a little bit of spray-on solvent. And after that, uh, I'm just, there's no need to really do much to the body outside of just take some of the, the, the dirt off. Um, so a little bit of paste wax. Um, you can see how much dirt comes off, not even that much. And then we'll do the, do the rest of the body. Once we're done there, we're going to clean up the, um, the metal components. Um, they were all pretty rusted, but it was surface rust. Um, wasn't a lot of deep pitting on anything. Um, the depth stop adjuster screw was really in the worst condition and it didn't take much to, to clean it up. that, clean up the knicker, and then the iron. Then you use a liberal coat of T9 to protect the metal, prevent future rusting. And from there we're going to uh, sharpen the iron first. Um, flatten the back of it just out of habit you don't really need to um, there's no chip breaker uh, touching this like you would have with the jack plane or a smoothing plane so um, this is sort of an extra step that I didn't need to do um, like I said before somebody had had already put um, a fairly decent bevel on it so it didn't take much just some some 300 uh, on diamond stone and then a uh, uh, some a thousand strop it and do want to put a little bit of a back bevel on it I use the ruler trick but I use some um, folded paper instead because my um, sharpening stone sits a little proud of the wooden base and so you got to get the iron up a little bit higher than you normally would if you're just using a ruler. So from there I'm going to sharpen the knicker um, and that's pretty straightforward. You want them to be pretty sharp because um, they're, like I said, they're cutting the, they're scoring the, the wood fiber um, before the iron begins to cut it. Uh, so I want them pretty sharp. What I didn't realize was that one side, the iron, or the, excuse me, the point of the, of the knicker was bent outwards just a little bit. And I really didn't 
figure that out while I was sharpening it. Um, and that's going to create some real problems down the road. You want both of those to be totally in line with the rest of the knicker, uh, the points, um, because they need to be in line as well with the um, the edges uh, or the yeah the edges of the of the iron. Um, you don't want the knicker to be cutting or scoring the wood wide of where the iron is, um, and that's exactly what was gonna, is going to happen here. And you're going to see kind of the mess that it makes. So now we're ready to go. I'm um, going to set the stop where I want it. Um, you begin your cut by drawing the plane, but you can see how deep I have those knickers set. That's too deep. Um, you want that to, they want them to be a little bit more shallow than that. Um, so to begin with, uh, you're going to set the the iron, or excuse me, set the plane um, in line with your fence, and you're going to draw it backwards a couple times to score the wood, and then you can begin planing. So right off the bat, one of the things I'm noticing is that this is it's just really rough. Um, uh, it does not feel. Um, like it's cutting very smoothly at all. You need to adjust the iron a little bit deeper. Um, but even with that, uh, and what's happening here is that, like I said, the left-sided knicker is sitting a little bit proud of where the left side of the iron is cutting. Um, so it's sort of making a double, a double cut, I guess you could say. And what happens is it just ends up tearing up the left wall of the of your dado. And you can see what that looks like here. Right side looks great. Nice and clean. You know, this is on the inside of the piece that you're making, and so maybe this is hidden and this wouldn't be a big deal um, for you, but it's definitely not not going to work for uh, not going to work for this video. Um, so I, had, I have another dado plane that needs to be fixed up as well, but what I decided to do is just compare the two knickers um, and see what the difference between the two of them was because I wasn't hundred percent sure why. Uh, what was wrong with the, the knicker on the plane that we're we're working with today and it's uh, kind of it's just sort of hard to see um, how that's bent to the left but it definitely gave me a sense of what I needed to fix so we spent about five minutes um, just taking that entire edge and making sure it was um, absolutely flat So it's time to set up the plane again. So there we go, both walls looking super clean. Um, much different than our first, our first dado. Um, 
can tell, you know, you look at the left side, the first dado and the left side of the other one, and it looks so much better. Um, so kind of the camera angle changes a little bit here. You can see that the, the knicker is still a tiny bit wide. Um, so it's leaving a little bit of material um, down in that left corner uh, of the wall. Um, so I'm going to need for this one to come back again with a chisel or with a router plane and clean that up. Um, I'll adjust the, the left side of that uh, knicker a little bit more so in the future I don't, I don't get that, that, double, uh, that double cut. Um, so yeah, there, there it goes. That's what it looks like. Um, hopefully your dado does not require this much work to... To set up and, and get going um, but uh, if it does uh, good luck and enjoy using it it's a handy little plane thanks for watching and goodbye